The SAT really, really loves transversals, the digital SAT. The old SAT didn't really do this that much, but uh, we're gonna keep getting this picture and we have to know how to read it. Now, in this case, uh, they do tell us that the lines are parallel, but that has nothing to do with the answer, okay? It doesn't really matter because we're only focused on this little set here and this is really just two lines intersecting and so we're really just using angle rules. So what's opposite of the 145 is, is also 145, right? Like these are basically just vertical angles. Right now, because of the parallel lines, we could fill everything else in, and you should also recognize that this is 145 up here and 145 over here. It, that's, that could come up in later questions, but yeah, there, there's not much to the parallel lines here. Uh, so C is the answer, the value of X is equal to 145. Um, but for the sake of dragging this out so it doesn't become a YouTube short, uh, let me just talk a little bit about choice D, because this is an answer choice that could come up in lots of different types of questions, and there are lots of strategies around it. Basically, on a hard question, in either module, later in the module, if we had this answer choice, it's almost always a trap for hard questions. Because what they're hoping ha happens is that it's a hard question, you don't know how to solve it, and then basically you just give up, and you're like, well, if I can't figure it out, it must be impossible, and then you cross it, you, you know, you pick D, because that's basically saying the same thing, that it's impossible. Now, that's not gonna happen on a hard question. There, it, it, there'll be some sort of answer, but uh, so you could cross it out and just pick from something else randomly. But on an easier question like this one, you might, might get a situation where it is a valid answer, but it's never gonna be right because you are just stuck. It's gonna be right because you're looking at the situation, you understand the geometry that's involved, and you realize that you're missing some piece of information that you would need, right? So if I just drew like a normal kind of triangle, oh boy, this is gonna be an ugly triangle, but there you go and they only gave me one angle, and they said, okay, what's the value of X? Even though that looks like a right angle there, if it's not labeled as such, I don't have all the information. So this would be a good example where I would say, okay, this may be angle, this is 14 degrees, let's say. Well, I don't know the value of X. It cannot be determined unless I am given more information about that triangle because you need two angles of a triangle to kind of subtract and get the third. So it'll be situations where it is provable that you're missing something. But that's not gonna happen very, very often. So really it's not a choice you should be picking, but I do wanna say, especially on hard questions, it usually is an indicator of a trap. This is not a hard question though.